Welcome back. In this case, we're going to be looking at exponent laws. Uh, you're a little used to seeing formulas there. In this case, we're going to be creating a few as we go. Because we want to look at the different types of exponent laws. So when you have something like, say, 2 to the power of a, whatever a might be, as always, we're just using a variable, doesn't matter. It will eventually be, it could be a number. We want to show some general cases. And we know 2 to the a, okay, well that's 2 to the power of whatever. If it was 2 to the power of 3, it'd be 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. But what happens when I have another one right beside it? 2 to the b. How do we combine these? I mean, I could separately do each and then multiply them together. But in this case, I don't know what a or b is. How can I write this as one number? Well, when you have this, as long as they're to the same number here, the same base, then what we get is simply 2a plus b. You add them. Well, if they were numbers, if we knew what they were, we'd just simply add them. Uh, one thing is worth noting, if you had 2 to the a and 3 to the b, you couldn't combine these. You'd be done. If they were asked to simplify, you'd be like, hey, that was the easiest question ever. I'm done. Of course, if you knew what these numbers were, you could figure out what that is. Like if this was 2 squared, it'd be 4. If this was 3 squared, it'd be 9. Oh, and then it would be three, 9 times 4, or 36. But right now, we're stuck. We'd be done. We'd call that a day. Let's look at some actual examples. So, remember, it doesn't really matter what the base is, as long as the base is the same. So if I had something like 4, to the power of 3 and 4 to the power of 6. Again, I could figure them out separately, but if I was just asked to simplify it and keep it as an exponent, this would be the same as 4 to the 3 plus 6 or 4 to the 9. And I invite you to try that home. Check. Try 4 to 3, 4 to 6, punch them in your calculator, figure out what they are, multiply them together, then punch in your calculator 4 to the power of 9, you're going to see that saves you some time. So, we're good, but what if there is more? More than 2? Again, it doesn't matter what the base is, as long as the base is the same, so 5 to the 7, and 5 to the 3, and 5 to the 9. And 5 to the 2. Great, again, I could just do them all separate. But if I want to simplify this as an exponent, this is the same as saying 5 to the 7 plus 3 plus 9 plus 2. Or, in other words, 5 to the 21. Good. And again, punch that in your calculator, you'd figure out what it is. A pretty big number, obviously. But, we can also have negative exponents. And we're talking about the meaning of that. Well, actually, you know what? I'll talk about the meaning of that in probably in the next video. But what is 5 if we had the same 5? And now we have, I don't know, 7. Then we have 5 to the minus 3. And then 5 to the 4. And then 5 to the minus 6. What's going to happen here? It's the same basic math. We still are adding the exponents, but some of them are minus. Some of them are negative numbers, so we have 5 to the 7, and we're going to think it's plus minus 3. So it's really going to subtract 3. Plus 4, plus minus 6. So it's really 7 minus 3, plus 4, minus 6. So 11 minus 9, really, or 5 squared. And then we could say, hey, it's 25. Or if we just want to leave it as exponent, we could just call it right there. So this is a pretty quick introduction to how you handle the multiplication ones. And well, that's all we need.